Greetings once again. This is the final piece of the Botany Crash Course for the Master Naturals program. And this uh, presentation will be shorter, but I want to highlight some tools and resources you can use, especially if you are interested in doing a project related to plants and botany. So I'll go over some of those resources, and uh, some of them we'll be using in class on uh, Saturday, April 20th. So if you want just a really basic level uh, re textual review of botany, um, our own Extension Gardener Handbook is not a bad place to start. So the Extension Gardener Handbook is essentially the gardening textbook uh, in North Carolina developed by NC State Extension. It began life as the Master Gardener Training Manual, but was heavily revised uh, about what, seven or eight years ago, nine years ago, and it's now in its second edition. But a specialist and agents rewrote a lot of the older chapters, updated them, and have you have this gorgeous, you know, eight hundred page textbook. But the, the the best part is it's free, so you can get an online version of this entire handbook uh, online at this website here. So just search NC Extension Gardener Handbook. One of the chapters there are like eighteen nineteen chapters is on botany. So if you want a a uh, relative a a broad overview of botany. A lot of the stuff I've covered in, especially the first two lectures, the uh, text sorry lectures two and three, um, is uh, mentioned to some degree in, um, in the botany chapter. But if you're interested in gardening, there's also chapters on native plants, on vegetable gardening, composting, gardening containers, fruits, uh, uh, and um, ornamentals, uh, herbaceous ornamentals, woody ornamentals. All that's in in this handbook as well. So. Please check it out for a big picture of your botany and other horticultural questions. As sort of a, a parallel component to this extension gardener training, uh, Dr. Alexander Krings, who's the bot bot botanist and, and botanical specialist with NC State, has developed some exercises, on uh, online exercises to help you learn some of these obscure botanical terms. So on this website, uh, you can see there are different tabs at the top here, and they those are for different, essentially, quizzes on plant identification, uh, 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 plant identification of certain plant parts and forms. So in this example, these are different kinds of inflorescences, so groups of flowers. And so the way this works is you would uh, go to this sidebar on the left here, click and hold on one of the shapes, and then you would drag it over to one of the boxes uh, on the right that has a term beneath it. And so you're trying to match the, the shape with the term, and then you can quiz yourself and see what, what you got right or wrong. So there's the different options for or twigs and buds and leaf structure, leaf shape, flower structure, etc. If you want a more in-depth understanding of how plants are related to each other, uh, so you want to go the full Matt Jones here, uh, <laughs> the two textbooks I recommend on where the relationships of, of plants would be Plant Systematics by Michael Simpson, lots of excellent photographs as well, um, or Plant Systematics, a phylogenetic approach uh, by Judd et al. And both of these are pretty standard textbooks for taking a college level uh, plant systematics and taxonomy class. More useful though, uh, that I would highly recommend if you're getting into the botany business or with plant ID, is to have a copy of uh, plant identification terminology and illustrated glossary. We'll have six or seven copies of this for class on uh, on Saturday, the 20th. Uh, but this is a, a nice little book that has every godforsaken esoteric term in botany you can imagine in it. And it's organized as kind of two books in one. Uh, the first half of the book is all these terms in alphabetical order. And the second half groups the terms by plant part. And for each definition, there'll be a one word, I mean, sorry, one sentence definition and a little drawing. So it's a very good resource. If you come across these terms, don't want to memorize them. I don't memorize them all. I just learn them from repetition. Uh, this is a, a constant re good reference to have, and especially when you're keying out uh, 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 plants um, in, in a formal and systematic way. Uh, a, a related book uh, that is, is good, too, is um, by uh, Dr. Susan Pell and, and uh, Bobby Agnell. Uh, Dr. Pell is a 
uh, botanist at the U.S. Botanical Garden in D.C. And uh, this is a, a similar in concept to this book, uh, but it has maybe more detailed drawings, not as many terms, but it's a very nicely published book too. So a botanist vocabulary is quite good as well. But there's also free resources for understanding all these terms, uh, both from the Missouri Botanical Garden and the Morton Arboretum. So if you go to either of these sites, you can just type in whatever word you come across and it'll give you a definition uh, of what they're referring to. If you want to learn plant families, and remember a plant family is a formal taxonomic rank, and it's the level at which uh, uh, botanists will try to really learn the features uh, of. And once you can start recognizing plants at the family level, then it really narrows down and speeds up identification. Uh, uh, and so the two sources I recommend in, in a formal academic sense is the Photographic Atlas of Botany, uh, amazing photographs. And um, uh, so this, this will show uh, some of the most common features of, of the major families. Um, to give you kind of an orientation, uh, familiarity, if you will, of, of these different taxa. More commonly recommended for an amateur, though, is a book called Botany in a Day uh, by Thomas um, uh, Elfell. And uh, this is similar in that it shows different kinds of patterns and common features of different families, but they're using uh, really nice illustrations. Uh, and... Uh, with lots of good hints. So this is a great way to learn families too. Um, and uh, it's kind of nominally targeted at would-be herbalist, but, uh, and also it's uh, published out um, somewhere in Western part of the country. So some of the plants featured are more biased to the Western uh, part of the continent, uh, but the classification's all up to date. So it, it goes by APG here means angiosperm phylogeny group, which is this uh, consortium of scientists who are constantly updating and uh, clarifying how plants are related to each other. So it does follow those guidelines uh, for names and relationships. Now, uh, the ultimate guide to uh, plant species of a given region is called a flora. And uh, floras um, encompass every species of a region. They include a key, in terms of a, a, a method for identifying them uh, systematically, and also uh, descriptions of the species, and often illustrations or photos. Uh, these are monumental works. Uh, they take decades to update and develop, um, and especially when you're in a region that has so many plant species like the Southeast. So the, 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 the classic and the one that's still, that's still printed as a book it's called the Manual of the Vascular Flora of the Carolinas by Radford, Ailes, and Bell. Uh, most often people just call it the Radford. But you can see it was last updated in 1968. It's because it takes an entire career to do this. So if you need a physical book, this is the common thing that many people from this region were trained on. It still has some good keys. It's still useful for learning species. Just know that a lot of the species, not a lot, but there there could be name, names to uh Name changes to species, name changes to other taxa levels. The families have now been, are a little different and there's been additional species added since then. So the, the updated flora is called flora of the Southern Mid-Atlantic States, flora of the Southeast. These are all iterations of the weekly flora by Alan Weekly, who's the um, a botanist extraordinaire, ecologist extraordinaire um, at uh, UNC. And it's been his career to update this floor for the entire uh, region. Um, and uh, so this is going to be the ultimate updated form. Uh, so this is the floor you want to start using in the future, really. However, the, the floor is not yet available as a printed book. It's available as a free online PDF. The PDF is 1,800 pages, uh, depending on which format you're using. Because <laughs> you, because what you can do is you can you can request it for each state. So he's doing the whole Southeast and then some, uh, but you can subdivide into into states. But even the state one, like North Carolina, one's about a thousand pages long. So as a PDF, that can be a bit cumbersome to use. 
So until this comes out uh, as a book, which will still be several years off, um, you can get an online version and an app version of this that are magnificent. And then that the app version and the online, the, the website version of this is called FloraQuest. So you can access the Flora essentially um, online for free on a, on a browser at this website. But the easier to use one is on a smartphone app, and that's called the FloraQuest app. And it's about 20 bucks uh, you can get from the your Google Play or Apple um, app store. And I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, they just came out with the version for North Carolina. And, you know, I'm not one to be fond of lots of finicky technology that is, you know, um, a replacement for real skills and brains. But uh, this is magnificent. This is different. <laughs> this is, uh, I've never seen a key um, on a phone app uh, that is this good. It it is it works pretty much flawlessly. Uh, there are keys, there are photos, there are there's just so much information. Um, and uh, I'll demonstrate the sum on Saturday. But if you come across a term that's highlighted in blue, you can click on that and it will tell you what it means. So as you're working through the key, um, it should provide you lots of hints. So really, really excellent. I recommend it. We could not find a clever way to be able to buy this as part of the master naturalist training because it's hard to do a group app you know app purchase so this is up to you it's only 20 bucks it's totally worth it um get it um if you watch this before class and you're in the plants maybe try to get it before class so we can play around with it uh, during class there are there's also a floor that's being developed for all of north america it's called the floor of north america and this has been like a 30 year ongoing project. Uh, and it's still not done because uh, there's lots of plants in North Carolina. Uh, in theory, one, you can start buying the books. Um, so you can have an, higher, an entire bookshelf. Uh, it's like buying the Encyclopedia Britannica, but it's also online for free. Um, there are many groups that aren't done yet, but a lot of them are. Uh, so uh, this is kind of, uh, if you want to ex go into a more expansive look at the plants in, in the in the country, you can go here. Um, it's also good for um, very thorough descriptions. So if you know a plant and you see, you want to know, like, how would you formally describe this in a botanical sense? Like, what would a botanist call this shape if it's not clear and, like, say, weekly key or something? Uh, you would go here and read the description of that genus or that family or that species and get a better idea of what that is referring to. I do recommend the entry on Sideroxylon. It's particularly poetic. Um, a brilliant botanical poet wrote it. Hint, hint. Um, uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, I'm, I'm I'm full of crap. So, uh, but but this is just an example. But but you can see, like, say. Um, uh, do you want to know what the stems are like or something? And you can see for this whole genus, they vary in their how much hairs they have. Um, and if you were to go down to the species in this genus, it may be that the different uh, uh, the hairiness on the stem could be a distinguishing feature among species, for example. Anyway, so so fun to play around with as well. There's also the flora of China, the same or a similar working group. Uh, e floras um, is is excellent too, and that can be helpful sometimes when you're trying to identify ornamental species, like in a garden context, um, because many of them come from Asia. Okay, now back to the practical. Uh, wildflower guides are sort of abbreviated floras, and they work a bit differently because with wildflowers you're you're, you're looking at the pretty wildflowers, right? So they're, they're typically arrayed or arranged so that uh, the species in the guide are organized by flower color, because what an easy way to narrow down possibilities, right? You're in the wild looking at a flower. What color is it? And, and, and usually with wildflower guides, there are lots of photos too. So in a, in, a, in a crude way, if you see a yellow flower, let's say, in the field, you could, within 10 minutes, look through every photo 
and see if you can identify it, right? That's a, like a, a, a kind of a crude bootstrapping way to do it. But uh, even within a given color, it's organized by, uh, they're organized by say, leaf arrangement, leaf shape, um, petal number. So you can narrow it down uh, more specifically and don't have to do all that searching necessarily. So the best wildflower guide for our region is called Wildflowers of the Atlantic Southeast. And this was first, uh, this is printed, started and published in 2019. So it's more up to date. And this one for our region was written by people at the North Carolina Botanical Garden. So Damon Waits, the director, Alan Weekly is the flora guru. And Laura is a, uh, that works for the Botanic Garden is am amazing um, and did a lot of the work here um, and has uh, did a lot of the photographs too. Um, so she's the, the, the first author. So, uh, but, but really fabulous wildflower guide. Um, I can bring copies of this to class on Monday, if you like as well. Now the book that you got uh, as part of the class training is this one, Native Trees of the Southeast. This is the best printed tree guide. Um, and it has a lot of, uh, it has pretty good keys, uh, relatively easy to use keys. Uh, and because it narrows it down to trees, the keys are not as complex as if you were, say, using a flora or something. Um, and then and for each species, it has an entry on a description that describes, say, some distinguishing field characteristics. Uh, it has some uh, information about the use and history of that tree, if there was any um, information about when they flower and when they fruit, et cetera, et cetera. So, and, and, and good photographs, uh, too. So you already have a copy of this, but it, and we chose it because it's the best uh, printed tree guide we have for our region. If you want to get nerdy, you want to identify or nerdier. I mean, come on, this is this is the fourth lecture of mine you've gone through. You're quite the nerd, but uh, especially nerdy, you can you can actually identify a lot of trees based on their twigs alone, or at least get, at least get the genus. And I do teach a winter botany class every January, uh, so I'll be sure to notify you all whenever. Um, I offer that next year, uh, but one of the options is to use this this book, um, and it has there, there are particular uh, morphological features on twigs that can be helpful for identification, and so it'll describe what those features are, and then there are keys using those features. Uh, the book itself is a little pricey; it's a it's a hardback book that's pretty thick, but it's a very nicely printed book from UGA Press. And then uh, Dr. Krings, Alexander Krings, is the botanist and the curator of the NC State Herbarium, vascular plant herbarium. Um, I should say herbarium there. That's funny. Um, and uh, uh, he uh, also uh, created some free online keys for certain plant groups. The one on trees is very good. And we'll look at ferns too, but I'll show you a few of those now. So you can find them all here, or you can just search NCSU Botanist Little Helper, which is where all the keys live. And the uh, one guide that I'll talk about more when I give a talk, I hope, at the Botanical Garden in September is on ferns. So there's a there's a guide on identifying common ferns of Central North Carolina. Uh, when I do my tree ID class, uh, in usually once a year in September, we use his on free online key. This really does focus on central North Carolina, and it's not exhaustive, but it will hit on many of the most common trees in our region. So another free online key. And then in my winter tree class, we also use uh, this winter uh, online key uh, for folks because it's free and I don't have to buy uh, 30 expensive books for everybody. Um, so all those can be found on, the, on these URLs and QR codes. And then he also has uh, a... Uh, it's not part of Botta's Little Helper. It's a little older. Uh, I, I want to emphasize that um, bark is generally not a good tool for identifying trees. There are some species that have really distinctive bark. Uh, and uh, there are other species that once you learn them from other clues, you can add bark to as a as a you know gestalt or quick signal to your brain to say, oh, it may be this. But bark varies a lot among species, within species, among individuals, uh, with age, and it's hard to describe. Um, so it, it can be kind of crudely described, but because of its variability, it's hard to have a uh, coherent and consistent um, 
a set of vocabulary to describe it in detail and uh, well. So, uh, but there are some species that are distinguishable and there are a few here you can learn that, that um, are recognizable by their bark. And then uh, NC State Extension, we recently came out with a, a guide for common trees. It's very nice because it can come, I, they're hard to obtain, it's like rare right now, but they do come in, sorry, in like nice printed formats. So your local extension office may have copies. Um, I'm trying to get more myself, but it's also free online and you can just print it yourself. Um, and um, it's very nice because the keys are very easy to use. Um, and uh, it's not, again, not that many species, but if you really want a very easy introduction to dichotomous keys and to true identification, this is a good place to start. And then uh, Dr. Stephanie Jeffries is uh, a pro teaching professor at NC State um, in the College of Natural Resources. So everyone in forestry and many of the plant-related disciplines uh, often take this course. It's very, it's extreme, an extremely good course to take if you if you have the means to take um, a class. Uh, as employees, we could take classes for free, so that's cool. But uh, anyway, great class. But uh, during COVID, obviously, um, she had to um, think differently about how she taught the class uh, in 2020 and 2021. And so with the help of her teaching assistants, she made a, they made a bunch of videos on common North Carolina trees. And so if you go to this website, it's a YouTube playlist. And each of the entries is probably three minutes at most, and they'll show you some of the key um, field features of those trees. So a very good uh, resource for identification. And finally, um, um, almost finally, sorry, a few more ideas. <laughs> uh, in terms of our resources, we also have a plant toolbox that if you have a more horticultural question, or you're dealing with um, plants in a landscape context. We have um, our own database of plants that can be pretty good for um, learning about that species. Um, so if you come across a species, you want to learn more about it, put it put in the entry here, you can search for it, and you can learn about its growing conditions, essentially. And then you can also sort it. So if you under find a plant, like if you're looking for a specific plant in a specific kind of environment, um, you can sort by those characteristics. So say if you want a four foot tall evergreen shrub that tolerates part shade um, and has a red flower, you could you could narrow it down, filter it that way um, and see what entries come up. It's uh, in constant review, constant additions, um, ongoing process, but a, a good database, probably the best, one of the best plant databases in the country, uh, um, along with the Missouri Botanic Gardens database. Then uh, uh, iNaturalist is a, another tool uh, that can be used in different ways. So it, it exists as a citizen science um, community uh, uh, engagement uh, a website. So one way to use it is if you find a, if you come across something um, and, and this, can, this applies to any organism, not just plants. And you're like, what is this? You can, there's a way to submit it to a group of experts that just happen to use iNaturalist, um, enthusiastic amateurs and otherwise, and professionals, and they'll identify it for you. It can take time, it can be very quick, it depends. Um, but it's also a way to record your own observations and share what you found. Um, and that's where it's extremely useful, I think most useful. Um, and so uh, it's very, very good. Now, um, uh, this, along with the uh, machine learning type apps, are a way to identify plants. They may not always be the best way. I mean, of course, submitting to experts is fine, but the iNaturalist also has a, an, a, an AI-based app called C. But these these photograph these the, these photo-based apps uh, are. Uh, using a photograph you take and they compare it to a database 
and they're, 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 I assume the algorithm is measuring really subtle things that we're not always seeing, like the relative ratio and arc of different leaf shapes and, and other such proportional math mathematical things that we're not uh, good at analyzing or quanti or um, we'll say coherently quantifying quickly. Uh, but uh, these are only good as the photo is. Um, trust but verify and understand that they can get give you a lot of bad answers. Um, also, uh, it is, uh, I think that um, this is the risk maybe with other kind of machine learning AI type applications is it can lead to a degradation in your own skills. And while this can be helpful for maybe amateurs or people starting out, um, no professional botanist would use this necessarily uh, because they know of the that accuracy and precision are important. Now, uh, there are other contexts where if you're doing sort of like a, I don't know, bio blitz or something like that, so where you, you're just getting a kind of crude idea of what's happening in a given region, they can be quite helpful. And it's not to say they're not getting better over t with time. So, uh, you know, if, if you if you come across something and you don't even know where to begin, see what it says and see what these 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 apps say and maybe try to verify that using more traditional identification methods. So I uh, uh, well, we can certainly play around with these um, on Saturday, too. Now, which ones to use? Well, there's definitely a difference in quality um, and there's more research coming out about how accurate they or inaccurate they can be. So this is from a paper that I can share um, on the accuracy of some of these different apps. And they looked, they focused on trees and they took photographs of both the bark and leaves and combined um, and then looked at their accuracy uh, to the level of genus and to the level of species. So let's look at how bad they can be. So here's the name of the app on the left, and then here's their accuracy rate on uh, in, in these different columns. So first notice that bark is not useful at all in an accurate identification. You might as well flip a coin. Um, and I believe in this case, I should add that the iNaturalist refers to seek, which is a um, AI-based uh, identification app. It's different than submitting it to experts, which would be a much higher accuracy. Um, anyway, so so even to the genus level, like look at this plant snap at was mostly wrong. That's astounding. So um, if you want to take a picture of a plant with plant snap and uh, of the bark, and it comes up giraffe or um a porpoise um that would be fun but um meh, not so good here um others perform better so the, the top performers were picture this and i naturalist and uh accuracy was much better um with leaves and accuracy was better to the level of genius the fact is the features that separate species cannot always be easily photographed. <clears throat> so as we'll see, sorry, um, I'm getting the clip thinking about AI destroying the planet. Um, <clears throat> as um, some of the features that separate species can be extremely subtle. You could be, need to look at the underside of the leaves and their hairs and the shape of the hairs or something subtle about their fruit or even the timing of flowering, things like that may in, at times be needed to separate the level of species. Uh, so what this can, these can be useful for is if you're unfamiliar with a tree, like oh, what the hell is that? Where do I even begin? Photograph the leaves using picture this or iNaturalist seek, uh, and you'll probably get a pretty good idea of where to start. But um, even going down to the species level, even with a good photograph of the leaf, you'll see how badly they can start to perform. So there's a ways to go here, thankfully, um and um um i still will have employment for the foreseeable future all right so that's what i have for this lecture and i look forward to uh, seeing you on on the 20th
Again, thank you for being patient. I hope that these provide a good foundation if you want to go in depth uh, on this topic um, and um, don't don't get stressed about it. <laughs> uh, you're not going to have to memorize any of these terms, et cetera, et cetera. I just want to I, I hope that uh, uh, we could uh, with this natural master naturalist training, you come away with having a good foundation with plants. Um, as one of the facilitators of the program, I couldn't let you leave with um, knowing that you didn't know anything about plants. So uh, anyway, I'll see you Saturday and thanks again.